Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Williams, and this is the Pandora, uh, shoot, Panic and the Psycho podcast for um, January 22nd, 2018, and we are here to talk to you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, so, Panic, say hello. Hello! And well, let's get started. <laughs> no, no need for forma- formalities here, so... Uh, uh, Amber, how are you? What? Sorry, how are you doing, what? Amber? I'm doing pretty good. So am I. Just Don't worry about it. <laughs> Who is it these days? Working so hard for something. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot what we were gonna talk about today. <sighs> Jesus. Whoa. That's because I'm using OBS, and I accidentally hit start streaming instead of start recording. Oh. So sorry about that. Uh, that for the record, happen. we can just talk about whatever we want, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter what we do talk about. But, uh, yeah, we were having a conversation over text uh. yesterday about... Well, a, a lot couple of things. Of, well, a couple of things, just... For one, bad memes and the whole YouTube thing about. Well, th- there was also the thing about. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, it was the. It, man, this is so awkward. This is so unprofessional. This is going. Oh, uh, and. Oh, it was about. Um, yeah, the, uh, the whole stuff, right? Kickstarter crowdfunding versus um, Patreon stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about crowdfunding because I've seen a lot of shit that just didn't work out. It's almost like they just kind of were like, I'm going to start up this thing and then forgot they were doing it. Forgot they were doing a thing? I don't know. It's because, like, they never responded to anyone and nothing happened after people funded them. Oh, that that, that happens. uh, And it's just been sitting there. that happens like a ton that. with kick, excuse me, with Kickstarter. Considering you know you can just, yeah. you can just take the money and run. Yeah, and some other Kickstarter stuff I've seen um, was also stuff that was like ripoffs of stuff that's already been done. Yeah, Kickstarter, I... and like even when they were like bought on the website and shipped, they had like labels from like other <laughs> brands on them. <laughs> Like, they were clearly just stolen from another brand, and then just resold. It was so awful, I just, I wanted to laugh and cry at the same time. (laughs) Laugh because it was just so hilariously stupid, but also cry just because of how, like, fucking ridiculous that is. Like, they're making a mint off this while I'm just kind of, like... Shoving along miserably in my life, trying to do something way less fucked up. Well, hey, that's the art of the scam artist. They always make a quick buck. This, despite the fact, you know, oh, how God, tell me legal it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They usually choose sites that make it a lot easier to get away with it, too. There was some pretty fucking awful scam artists on DeviantArt. They got Such away as? with it. Uh, I don't remember any you, names. I would I've prefer it if you didn't a, name names. Quite a so. few throughout my days. <laughs> like, I remember one was stealing tons of prints oh, from a bunch that. of different artists, and they made thousands of dollars selling them off before anyone caught them. And then they just they fucking vanished. They ghosted. Took the money um, and run. Yep, literally took the money and ran, and it was. Outrageous. Like, that money could have gone to the actual artists and actually, you know, helped them, you know, put food on their own tables. Oh, that, that's another topic I'm going to get into, but, but uh, my... we'll save that for later. Uh, the whole Kickstarter yeah. versus Patreon my... thing. And, you know, I do know there's, like, GoFundMe and other stuff that, you know... GoFundMe is... I don't know. Um, I have qualms with it, just, like... Uh, Kickstarter, 
Um, but just like Kickstarter, it was made for like a good purpose, um, whether or not people take advantage of it. Um, GoFundMe is kind of more like actual just fundraising where they're not really promising anything. They don't have to promise anything. It's just like, help me earn enough money to do this thing. And sometimes it's really ridiculous shit, like some emo being like, help pay for my laptop because I'm poor and I'm emo and I need the <laughs> internet. But like other times it's more like legit stuff. Like uh, one of my friends from Renfair used GoFundMe to afford um, making these bomb ass fucking, I think they were like s'mores sandwiches or something. Um, and they helped, they, they, they got enough funds to actually like pay for most of it instead of doing it out of their own pocket. And it was for like the entire, um, the entire Renfair um, worker campsite. So um, it wasn't like it was just for him or anything. A lot of people from the campsite probably funded oh. it. Everyone you should also use, like, it. your Ren Fair experiences. Re Renaissance it. Fair, for those of you who don't know. Uh, I don't do it, but, she, but uh, Amber does. We'll just save that for a different day. I'm sure you have plenty of stories to talk about there. Uh, yeah, probably. I've only gone a couple years because of my um, temperature sensitivity issues. It's gotten too hot over there for me to be able to stand it without, like, literally oh, dropping Jesus. like a fly. For the record, I didn't know there was a difference between GoFundMe and, oh my god, and uh, Kickstarter. Other than the fact that Kickstarter, you have to, like, give a bunch of background, if not background information, but, uh, you do... Yeah, you, Kickstarter yeah. is more business-wise and more like a sponsorship kind of thing, um, while, uh... GoFundMe is kind of more like charity, where you don't exactly have to promise anything, um, aside from maybe like showing that you actually went and got the thing that you wanted the funding for or whatever. Yeah, well, because with Kickstarter, um, you also have to, on failed projects, you have to let the person know where that money went, where, let the people know where the money went, what happened, and all that stuff. Which, yeah. you know, for the record, you can not do that and just run away with the money. <laughs> Which is a little bit of a fault in that. Yeah, that's just that. <laughs> that's just going on people's uh, good yeah. moral, which they might not have in the first place when they started the Kickstarter. Yeah. Um. It. It also used to be that GoFundMe was also the place where you could get all the funding, whether or not you met your goal. Still, instead of it immediately just being put back to whoever donated. Um. But I think Kickstarter has a thing for that now, um, where you can also do it that way, where you still get some funding instead of uh, having it taken away from you if you don't reach your goal. The the funding right, right. goal limit, I mean. Um, but yeah, uh, Kickstarter used to not have that. And so GoFundMe was also more favored because the people could get that even if they didn't reach their funding goal. And let's um, be clear. I want to be clear on two things. One, I'm <laughs> I'm not the most informed person in the world, and <laughs> that's probably best for my sanity because when I'm informed, I go nuts. But uh, Amber's way more informed about a lot, a lot of things more than I am. Some things. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it informed. It's just I, I guess I like experienced a lot of it. Ex I've either heard things through the grapevine a lot, or I've uh, seen a lot of it happen myself, just paying attention to things. I have a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> so do I, and I'm still not informed. And another thing is, uh, you got to keep in mind, with kick both Kickstarter and GoFundMe and whatever other fundraiser thing you can do, most of them at least, anyone can do this. Anyone can just fund whatever they want, and... Can basically just put up a page and say, yeah. yeah, go do this. That's just kind of the same thing with Patreon, too. You can, uh... <laughs> segways. You can basically just ask... Well, there's less likelihood, in my opinion, to, uh... Focus, Kevin. 
there's less likelihood if any if just some random Joe on the street was saying he was gonna do the X, Y, and Z, and then people would look at it and go, "Hmm, mm. I I could pledge to this guy, but I mean, he just seems like an average Joe. I don't think he's gonna pull it off, and they could just not do it." I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Yeah. That's the vibe I get with Patreon. It's uh, more you're more likely to find you know, first of all, you're pledging less money because you're pledging X amount of dollars per month, whereas Kickstarter you pledge X amount of dollars just as a lump sum up front. Where where Patreon you can just cancel whenever you want. And you can just Yeah. Um with Kickstarter and all the others, it's usually that um People pick a certain amount either because they just really want to fund a thing, or more likely, it's because there's like a benefit they really want. True, true. Like special merch, yada yada. Um, there's not as much of that with Patreon. Um, Patreon tends to be more about um, like the the like cheaper um subscriptions and stuff um i forget what it's used called um pledge i'm sorry like, like you said um the i i was trying to remember what they use for like the word for what they do for giving away the money but um, like yeah it's uh patreon tends to be more like um lower amounts of pledges um and still getting certain rewards like either talking to this special discord with them and actually getting to talk to the people every once in a while or like um special streams just for them and like thank you notes and stuff like that i the discord thing i don't really agree with because then you're giving out somewhat personal information because you know not all those people have access to a discord well then again yeah Ooh, but yeah. you know streams i agree with you know you can but then again not many people who use patreon or, or Kickstarter know what even Twitch is. Yeah. What was that? Oh. Most don't know it. Um. That, for the record, I think Twitch is still a little bit in the niche. Really it's just it's not many people know about it, even though I'm seeing a whole bunch of. Like wrestling networks trying to post themselves to Twitch, and a whole bunch of uh, uh, new advertisers are coming on. Not in recent, not in recent mm -hmm. weeks, but pe people are getting in the know about it. But it's well, not the most known thing in the world. Oh yeah, it's just like um, well, most things in this kind of um, I guess you could say internet community. Um, in general, um, it seems like it's very well known, but like in the outside world, there's actually still a bunch of people that don't know what the <laughs> fuck we're talking about. <laughs> um, it's the same with like, I don't know, FNAF. We hear about FNAF all the time, Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, and you'd think everyone f would freaking know what that is, but like, um, God, I was watching game theorists and they were even mentioning that they went to some like board meeting or whatever and they asked them if they knew what that was and none of them knew what the hell they were talking about <laughs> to be fair i mean internet culture well not necessarily culture but the internet as a whole it's everyone in the world so everyone who has access at least so you know yeah. not everyone's gonna know everything about the internet it's just too big it's the universe it's a it's a universe essentially it's Forever expanding, and you don't oh, yeah. have time to watch everything. Yeah, pretty much. Um, even when you think something's so widespread because there's so many people talking about it, um, to the point where you can't even read through all the comments and stuff, uh, it's there's still going to be plenty of people out there that don't know what it is. I mean, we've got... How many billions seven. of people on the planet? Seven billion. Not seven, seven people. Seven onwards to eight. <laughs> seven onwards to eight billion people on the planet. Yeah, and um, not to mention there's 
a good few third world countries that don't even. I mean, have most of them have like so. internet cafes you can just go to. Yeah. But then again, most people can't afford that. And then there's other countries that have internet that just is um, alienated, heavily censored, and whatnot. Like, yeah, like North Korea. I'm sure they have internet all over there. Like they have like traces of it. Yeah, they just have what little is necessary, and um, pretty much everything's blocked out. North Korea, that's another topic for another day, at least until... <laughs> that's a thing for... E yeah. Oh, Do you gosh. have strong opinions around North Korea? Uh, I don't even consider it part of Korea. Whenever I mention, like, South Korea for anything, I just okay. call it Korea. <laughs> I don't the, even like... The other half is a dead zone, so... <laughs> But no, yeah, we much. should probably save that for another day, either when things escalate to the point where we oh, can't yeah. avoid it, or things calm down and we are looking at it from a different light. But anyways... Or just when we feel like talking about that, it. Yeah, yeah. But we, well, we only have an hour or so here, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, there's also oh, yeah, there's Indiegogo, that. which is also a crowdfunding... Um, community um they're god i don't know much about them because it's kind of more about the indie culture um so a lot of underground stuff that's not really all that like paid attention to some of it is also on kickstarter because some of them will decide to do both indiegogo uh um, so oh jesus christ I sorry i have i, I, I <laughs> Wow. I had the I'm I have a all three loaded up and they just automatically started playing an ad video. I gotta be careful with that. Uh, I oh, forgot weird. that they do that sometimes. Yeah. Um But yeah, uh Indiegogo uh is closer to Kickstarter than it is GoFundMe, but it's kind of like a nice in between. Um it doesn't have a lot of the restrictions that Kickstarter has. <clears throat> but it looks like it's a lot more fleshed out um, than it used to be when I first checked it out when I heard about it, but that was years ago. Um, I was just looking at it now, because um, I wasn't even sure if I was remembering it was actually, like, what it was correctly, because um, sometimes my memory is not that great. Uh, but, yeah, um... They're another crowdfunding source. They're, um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of things that come out of Indiegogo tend to be more legit than Kickstarter, which is really weird. But I think it's because it's more of a niche community. So most of the people that use it care about it. I'm not sure if that's still the case. Um, because it's it's been years since I've paid <laughs> much attention to it. <laughs> but, uh it's it's more fleshed out than it used to be. Everything still looks pretty legit. Um, so it probably actually is the case. Um, I think I like Indiegogo a bit more than Kickstarter. Kickstarter is probably my least favorite. Just because of how much bullshit's happened oh, on yeah, it. I can tell you stories about the bullshit that's happened on it. There's, I mean, there's videos <laughs> that will explain it better but, than I could. Way better than I could, but uh, oh yeah, it, most of them are revolving uh, around video games and some <laughs> weird stuff. Weird, and by weird I mean nasty. Yeah. <laughs> the only good thing I can think of that came from Kickstarter. There's no, a couple there's I can couple. think of. Never That's mind. Your... Um, there was there was um. Mystery oh, Science the Theater yeah, Three Thousand the came back. Um. Yeah, my friend uh, funded that. He got this really awesome t-shirt and poster and shit. Um, there was that. Um, and the only other thing I could think oh. of is Skullgirls. Um, I wanted to fund it so bad, but I didn't get a chance. There have been a couple other Kickstarter things I've seen recently that I wanted to fund. I'm not sure if they're actually still, like, doing good. They were things that, like, I heard of, like within a day or two of it happening, and it was already, like, well-funded. <laughs> past the goal, and I was like, well, shit. <laughs> I could still help out if I had money. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the big gate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's probably for the best that we don't discuss our financials. 
We're all it poor is, down here. It's California. It's expensive as heck. <laughs> oh, yeah. It costs you, like, all your limbs just to fucking exist here unless you're, like, some higher up part of Google. And even then, some of those um, guys are living out of <clears throat> of trucks. Yeah. I've true. seen the video on that, too. I don't know. Some people actually prefer to live in Prefer trucks. to live in it because, you know, you don't pay rent. And rent is a bitch. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Beat. Let's see. Um, as for Patreon... Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm looking at all three of these... Uh, all three other websites. First of all, there's a fee-based service for Indiegogo for some reason. I'm looking at the looking at the front page and it just says if you want to start an Indiegogo campaign, it is a fee-based service. I'm not sure if the other two do that, but or any other any others do that. But you know, at least they're being honest. They you know they need that money to fund their own mm -hmm. campaign, which is their business, keeping this alive. Which I'm gonna get into. Which I'm gonna get into that topic in a minute too. Well, like Kickstarter, it's still, it's still more of like a service than an actual charity. So there's taxes. Those fees are for taxes. Yeah, I can see that. As well as paying for salaries and whatnot for whoever's running the servers. Mm -hmm. It also depends on um, where the site has its servers and stuff, like where uh -huh. it was created, because that will depend on what laws uh. it has to follow. Yeah. Which is why not every website has exactly the same kind of, like, user agreements and stuff, because they don't have... It's not like everyone laws. reads those. <laughs> the user agreements. Yeah, but the site... The site creators can get arrested for shit that's done on their website. Depending on where they originate from, yeah. Yeah, if it breaks any of the laws, they can get in trouble for it. So I'm looking at the three, and I can, from what I can tell, there's a little bit of, excuse me, a little bit, some differences. The weird thing is about GrowFundMe I'm looking at is, you said that people sometimes just join it and start a GoFundMe just so they can, oh my god, just so they can, you know, buy a laptop and whatnot. I'm seeing a whole bunch of charity stuff here. Neighbors raised $50,000 to help the colds after fire destroyed their house. This Detroit... Oh well, yeah, it's mostly used for some really legit shit now, but... Like... I'm just looking... Back in the day, there was a lot of just like you know, internet scrubs trying to use it to Quick get cash, stuff yeah. they didn't necessarily cash. need. But I'm looking at that and I don't see a trace of that. I it's, I'm having a hard time finding stuff like that. I'm just... It's also the way that things are, um, you know, regulated with the algorithms and stuff. That stuff tends to get weeded out really easy now. So it's harder to find. I'm sure they made but, like strides yeah. to. I'm talking yeah, about they made back strides in the day. to keep all that stuff out. But GoFundMe is mostly yeah. charities. I can't find anything that's relating to like anything entertainment related. Emergencies, education, memorials, mm -hmm. sports, animals, wishes. I'm not seeing anything yeah. entertainment exactly. relating related. Kickstarter, you can get mix exactly. of like both. I said, it's all... Huh? Oh yeah, you get like tech. Film, games, comics, and yeah. Indiegogo, I'm only associated with games. That's the only one I've heard of. That's the only things that come out with of... games? There's a bunch of stuff on there. Is like... Board games? Um, a lot of it's also... Um, what's the word I'm using? I'm looking for it. Like, like, inventions and stuff? A lot of inventions are on there. Like, um, there's like a self-cleaning water uh -huh. bottle and stuff. There's some crazy shit on there. It's pretty great. And the weird thing is about this site, I can't go any well. I can't go anywhere other than just to click on the go the create my own um Indiegogo page. I can't see any of the pages. I can't even there's there's no links. There's no nothing.
No, there check it for it? yourself if you want. And I was looking at it, and it was already showing me a bunch of stuff when the I looked Indiegogo at it. The Indiegogo page? I, mm -hmm. All I'm seeing right now is the... Wait, maybe I, maybe I have to go back. Twitter, Wikipedia. No. Handheld console. Okay, now I'm here. Okay, games. they're wrong, wrong going. Funding, marketplace. All these other options. Yeah, it's about innovation and stuff, so... Oh, and... Even with games, it's about, like, you know... Innovative games. But it's all about innovation. Yeah, innovation, that's another thing. That, you know, bring something new to the table. I'm also looking at Kickstarter, and I found, found this funny. Uh... They also have a section for food and craft, which is... Wine squirrel. <laughs> that sounds so wine dumb. Wine squirrel? Is that like a cork? Yeah. It's the name of something for preserving oh. opened wine. <laughs> Why would they call it wine squirrel? That sounds, sounds so cute, weird. But anyways, uh... There's a food and craft section, which I guess it kind of makes sense because it also has like stuff here like a barbecue restaurant that helps the homeless. I would fund that. But I remember a while back mm -hmm. in like the early days of Kickstarter, there was just a family of, of just a family, <laughs> family. <laughs> there was just a family that said, yeah, we, we started Kickstarter just to make potato salad. That's it. <laughs> They, they were just showing a video of themselves making potato salad. And as a meme, they got like a hundred... Wasn't that on I'm Dubs? I haven't seen that video. Oh, okay. It sounds like something that would have been on I Dubs. I love all of his Kickstarter <laughs> crap. And as a meme, they got like a hundred thousand dollars for it. I, I oh feel just God. donated for a joke. That's and so the, sad. they didn't even get anything else of war. They just got like access to the video of them making the potato salad, and they said one of the rewards was you get like a little spoon of a taste of the potato salad in the mail. Oh my god! I think that's like the highest tier or something. I don't know if that's true or not, but I remember reading something about it a long time ago when in the early days of Kickstarter. Yeah, I remember hearing about that um that egg salad thing. The thought of it really grossed me out because I was like that'd probably take a while to show up in the mail and it probably wouldn't spoil before <laughs> it reached to them. I doubt either side, the makers or the patrons, would take that into consideration <laughs> when they donated to that tier. Yeah. A spoonful to taste, though. That just, that, oh god, that's just the thought. It just makes okay, me we'll move, we'll, we'll, we'll start moving away from that now. <laughs> and then there's Patreon, which is, you know, the whole thing about, you know, monthly subscriptions to fun, whoops, spelled it wrong. I mm -hmm. spelled it completely wrong, because my spelling isn't that great. Patreon. I'm getting a whole, in the yeah. Google search, you get a whole bunch of Patreon versus Indiegogo, Patreon versus Kickstarter, Kitch, Kickstarter versus GoFundMe. I should probably look that up, but. Uh, no, no, don't give me a video. <laughs> Patreon. I love Patreon. Despite the fact of it is. certain issues we'll get into in a minute. Yeah, it is a very useful platform for any kind of content creator or um, artist because um, it is very hard to make it on your own. You're telling me. Even with the help of others often, um, especially depending on what you do. Um, especially now because it's just, it's so flooded with creators that it's very difficult to make Well, there's a lot yourself. of creators in the world. 
Mm -hmm. oh, That's sorry. what I just said. <laughs> well, we're flooded. Just the um, level of competition is like, ridiculous. Yes, it's insane. Um, it was even that way when I was young trying to do this. You are still young. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> well, I mean, I was like in high school still trying to get my foot in the door. And um, it's very difficult. I, I remember prior to this. Yeah. Especially because there's really nasty people on there that are going to make nasty it harder people. for you. Define nasty. Uh, th huh? I, nasty people? Define nasty. Um, any spectrum from, like, internet trolls just being douchebags to be douchebags. Those don't count. Like, you know... Um, people out there to ruin you um, because your competition, oh, oh. Um, and also just you know, you trying to be like a good person or whatever, trying to uh, be sweet with other artists and having them basically <laughs> shit on you because they're already in a place where they just kind of look down on others. Um, not all artists or creators are like this, but a lot of them are. What would you say the um, ratio is? Like, on a scale... Especially because once you start getting bigger, you start getting a lot of shit people. It, well, it's competition. You gotta keep the competition in check if you want to make it. Oh, no. I mean, like, oh. fans-wise. There are some really toxic fans and followers and whatnot that you're going to deal with. And just other people that... I don't know. Um follow you anyway but don't act like a fan they just shit on you um there's a lot of that in all of that creator community especially in the artist community i'm not so uh sure about like uh content creators but con from what i've seen of youtube comments and stuff like that uh it seems just about as heavy um and they have to deal with that on like a day-to-day -day basis by themselves most of the time with content creators, like on YouTube and stuff, they often tend to end up getting a team once they start getting bigger, so that's a little bit easier to handle. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just, I am i don't blame them for the way that they get, be, but it, it, uh, it makes it even more difficult for anyone that's not of their level of notoriety. Um, to stay motivated to get further ahead in what they're trying to do. It's very discouraging. Um, well, some, some people, that's the goal, yeah. to make it discouraging even, so some people leave. Driven. Oh, yeah. Um, there are ones that are going to intentionally discourage you because competition, but there are other ones that are just, you know, they've got to stick up their ass because they've got, you know, so much shit to deal with already. Um, and they end up kind of taking it out on others without meaning to because they're just expecting everyone to be a piece of shit to them at that point. Um, just kind of for their own sense of sanity. Uh, and it can be very discouraging. It's driven people to suicide before. It's It's gotten pretty Pardon nasty. Um, it has. Um, I, that just, I mean... That's a possibility, I've, but that's a little I've bit shocking to me. I've seen it happen a lot in the artist community. It's it's happened. Um, luckily, a lot of the stories um, I've witnessed and heard have been mostly of, um, I guess you could say, failure with their attempts. Uh, I don't like. I don't like that either. That way, because it's just as negative. But basically, you know, um, they didn't exactly. Uh, it didn't turn out the way they planned for it, so they're still here, um, and they've learned and grown and and uh, changed because of it. Most of the time, some of them are still working on getting better. Probably, um, that shit will destroy your uh, mental. Yeah, because I mean, this is your passion after bad. all, and you're. You're having people try to oh, take yeah. that away from you, trying to make sure you don't live up to it. When you lose passion, you lose a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Either either you get jaded, or you find some other way to just um, block it out, or you get chewed up and spat out. <laughs> it's a tough world. But um, Patreon 
makes that so much easier. Um, I wish there was some other platforms um, that might have their own different way of doing things because it would add to more variety and um, they might not make the same mistakes. Well, yeah, because the thing is, Patreon kind of has a monopoly before. on the whole GoFundMe. Yeah, thing. exactly. I don't like that they monopolize. The monopoly is never fun. That's um, the, uh, the, the, the potential for abuse of power is always there, and it's always going to bite us in the ass. Exactly. They're the only ones that can do it, so they can be like, well, tough titties. Um. Luckily, they've actually cared a lot. I'm looking about at the page users. right now. It does say low transparent fees. You keep ninety percent. We keep five percent. Transaction fees is a five percent. Yeah, they have they have fees. I think the fees have gone up from what they used to be. It's five percent. Um, like, well, technically ten percent. My, my friend, my friend used to be my only patron, um, and. Uh, they're not anymore because they're dealing with their own um, money problems. But uh, they used to pledge about twenty a month, and I would receive twenty. Uh, not twenty. I would receive seventeen. That's a fair cut. I think twenty-four. Something well, what like year that. Was this? Yeah. Um. And and the fee wasn't. What I liked about it was they were still paying the amount they agreed on and the money was taken from me instead um instead of them having to be charged an extra amount like say how it is when you buy food at the grocers or on twitch because um, uh when you buy um, or, uh donation bits you pay like for like a hundred dollars you have to pay like 120 or uh, something like that 125 uh. or something like that so it's all a matter of do you want to so pay the fee or do you want the, the patron to pay the fee? I mean that I think it could work both ways because I personally would pay the fee. Um yeah, um clearly if people are doing that on Twitch and you know still doing it even with the fee, then clearly they don't mind paying it. Um, I personally don't mind paying for fees. I like the option. Like I wish they would make it an option where it could be like you know, I pay for it, or um, the person I'm donating to pays for it instead. Because um, some people would prefer it one way over the other. I like variety. I like choice. Um, but otherwise, um, I'm still glad that it's taken away from me instead of just taken away from the patron. Um, oh, as the uh, as the patron itself. Yeah. Um, cause if it, if it charged them extra on top of what they wanted to pay, um, often enough, it's all that they can give in the first place. So it's going to make them want to give less and in turn, you're going to get less too. Um, so there's less exchange there because yeah, yeah, I can hear taken from, away from the, from the yeah. patron, um, <laughs> which is why I usually prefer it to be taken away from the person they're donating to instead. Um, Aside from upping fees, which I'm sad to hear uh, is still a thing, um, at least it's not per dollar like it was originally going to be, uh, a lot of the complaints that I heard in uproars on Twitter for a good week or so before they changed it was that they took away the $1 and I think even the $5 um, options. So you had to charge... Um, basically like at least five or more dollars um, for your for your Patreon uh, pledge options. People couldn't pledge less than that. And like the huge majority of patrons were doing exactly that, especially because they wanted to pledge to um, multiple creators at once. And between that and the fees, um, uh, patrons just weren't, um, we lost a lot. Um, I say we because I was actually part of it for a while. I was going to ask, now, are you, I, really I remember have you. Any, I don't have any pledgers, but um, I still have a Patreon. I'm just, uh, it's it's kind of oh, under okay. construction right now. Hey. Um 
I want to redo it because it looks awful. <laughs> I, we'll we'll um, save that for later. You did, but, for, for yeah. anyone listening, yeah. don't don't pledge to it right away. Don't do anything just yet. We're not that big. We're not that special. Just you know, we'll save it for later. Yeah, it's under it's under construction. You can follow me or whatever. There's the follow option still where you don't have to pledge anything um, until my stuff's you know got its shit together. <laughs> I'm so misorganized. Um, but yeah, uh, after all that uproar, um, a lot of people left Patreon. Um, I don't know how many came back, but a lot of patrons left because of the fact that they couldn't actually do anything uh, anymore. By uh, patrons, do you mean the all those options. donators or the creators? My, my take is probably both. Uh, patrons are the okay. donators, the pledgers, um, not okay. the creators. Um, Just to be clear. The people who are, you know, setting up pledges for their stuff um, for patrons. Those are usually, I believe the term they use for that is creator. Um, so patrons are the pledgers, creators are the ones that set up the pledges and need the money. Um, they have, you know, sources and... Um, you know, rewards set up for said patrons. So they're called creators. Uh, but yeah, um, a lot of patrons left. Um, a good few creators um, left. Um, plenty were threatening to leave. Not necessarily threatening, but, you know, being like, I don't know yeah, if I can do this anymore. Yeah. I don't have a choice. You know, um, I don't know how many came back. I haven't looked that far into it. Um, I'd like to believe most of them came back, um, especially considering Patreon has that uh -huh. email service um, to anyone who has an account. And so um, they sent that out to like every account, um, email and everything. Saying, you know, we're sorry, we didn't realize that it was causing so much problems. We really thought that we had, like, you know, their best interest in mind. Yada yada. Typical, Corporate mentality. You know, professional email. No, just a professional email. I suppose. And this all happened within a week, right? Yeah, within about a week. Um, at least from a week from when I heard about it on Twitter, but, like, usually when I, um, uh, I was paying more attention to Twitter at the time, and, uh, usually the people that I was following that were tweeting about this are usually very quick about this stuff, so I'm pretty sure I heard about it as soon as it uh -huh. happened, pretty much. I probably got an email about it notifying me of the changes, because they usually do send it out an email for every update and change. <laughs> but I didn't see it. <laughs> well, you know, it ended up in your spam folder. Because I don't check my emails very much. For all you know, it probably huh? ended up in your spam folder or something. Uh, no, I usually see them on my phone. It's just, um, I haven't had a reason to pay attention to Patreon for a while. So I tend to just ignore it. Um, also, I don't, um, check my emails very frequently. Because I usually just get a lot of, like, spam or advertisements or whatever. Um, so I don't really have to pay attention to my emails. Um, but, yeah, um, I'm glad they changed it back. I'm still kind of upset that they thought that was a good idea. It makes me wonder how, just how in tune they are with their own users. Yeah, and that's another thing, because they have to um, sit in the boardroom, or at least in a Skype call, saying, this is a good idea, and we should do this. Yeah. Yeah, they have they have a team that comes up with all of these things and what to change and what to do and what they think is going to be a good idea and they actually thought that this was a good idea and that people would be on board and it backfired so strongly that like I couldn't look at Twitter without seeing some kind of complaint about it for a week and so I just they they obviously don't know their own member base that much, and that worries me, because if you're going to form a community like that, you need to really be in, be in tune with them if you're going to make changes that you think are going to help Moral of the story, people. <laughs> 
Like if 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 you if you really think something's a good idea for a bunch of people, you should probably be sure that you know the bunch of people that you're trying to make these changes for. It just it just makes sense. If you think it's a good option just because it sounds like one in your head, then it's probably a dumb idea. It's probably a dumb idea. That's where the it's a very you know, you go to other people it. and tell them, "Is this a good idea?" comes in. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, which makes me also confused because you'd think that at least one person on that board would probably be part of this and have their own, you know, Patreon set up for, for pledges. Because if they have their own experience with it, it's going to be a lot better to get an idea for what others want. But, like, clearly they're not. <laughs> because they don't know what's going on. Um, I hope that those... I hope that future changes will not be as bad. I still have a lot of high hopes for Patreon, but I'd also like to see some other... pledge-based... Um, Just so they don't have the monopoly? Communities, yeah. Yeah, I don't want them to be the only platform for this. I'd like some other platforms for others to use that have, you know, variety to them. I like options. I mean, Kickstarter isn't always um, an option, but I it's don't not like, a reliable one. Yeah, I don't like... Well, with Kickstarter, it's project-based. It's not necessarily for just, you know, funding. Permanent funding. funding. Um, well, Semi-permanent funding. Yeah, it's not... It's not permanent funding for um, a team or uh, a person and their um, and their endeavors. It's funding a specific project. You could just keep putting up every project on there, but um, I was thinking like Kickstarter in the ways of if you had a web comic and you wanted to turn that into like a comic book or a book or whatever, you know, you can go over to Kickstarter while you still have the Patreon. And go fund for the publishing. I've yeah. seen a lot of people do that. Um, I thought about doing a Kickstarter for a comic <laughs> once. I couldn't decide between a graphic novel or like an actual web comic, but um, that was long before stuff like webtoon. Um. Which isn't exactly like a funding source so much, but um, you can still like do pretty decently with web comics on there. I don't know much about webtoon. I, I haven't been on there that much, much. but uh, I I know my way around <clears throat> it a little bit. It's more like a jumping off point, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, but um. But yeah, I have I have high hopes for Patreon, and um, I'd like to believe that it's only um, a matter of time till there's other stuff like Patreon. For all I know, there is, and I, I haven't just seen haven't any of it. I've yet. been looking up. I've been trying to at least from what Google has to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which brings me into like two sort of questions. This is my question of the week, which is a segment that we're probably not going to do ever again. We, we, we might, we might not, and that's up to Amber, that's up to me, whatever. Is What is the truly the best way mind. for A, an artist to... This is like a three-part... This is, this is like a three-part question, so hang on a second. Uh, for artists to really get their foot in the door and start making money off of their content, and for the best way for content creators to reach their audiences, this is obviously, see, obviously not going to be from YouTube. <laughs> um, well, for artists, there's a lot of steps. There's just, you have to, you have to keep with it. Um, just like any business or whatever, you have to be professional about things. You, you got to keep a smile whether or not you're doing all or that great. Or if people um, complain. <laughs> you have to update frequently um because people just like to know how you're doing and everything it's just it's 
it's all stuff that makes you look more enticing. Um, keep up with your art, whether or not you think you're doing all that great. Don't play the comparison <laughs> game. It doesn't matter whether or not you think an artist well, is better. Do than I play the comparison game sometimes? If you, yeah. If you keep comparing yourself to all these other artists that you have to compete with, you're going to fall into this horrible pit of despair very quickly and you're not going to be able to keep things up. Um, the biggest thing is keeping things up because it is very difficult to do exactly that. Another part is advertising helps. Uh, yeah, if you, if you, if you would, if you would mind. Uh, um, you can't afford that, but it does if help. You can afford, I would definitely recommend um, advertising because, I mean, for me, as a writer for a book that's coming out no time in the near future, <laughs> uh, it's difficult for writers just because, you know, you just can't post it. You can post it to maybe places like, I don't know, a Wattpad or whatever, but that's not the most reliable place. You're basically just giving out stuff for free. Yeah. But if you want to get published, yeah, you know, you have to go through a whole bunch of ringers, whether it's traditional publishing or self-publishing, whether you go to a publishing house or you get a get an agent and then they have yeah. to send it to publishing houses. And at the end of the day, you still need yeah. marketing for your book. You still need to figure out how people exactly you know, know about your book and get interested in your book. Even if they don't like it, they still, you know, talked about it or read it or bought it. But at the end of the day, you still have to jump through a yeah. whole bunch of hoops as a writer. As an artist, you mm -hmm. there's stuff like, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not... Writers are artists. As, an, as, a, as a drawing Go artist on. is what I mean. You have, I yeah, honestly like feel like you have to jump through less hoops, at least these days, considering, you know, you have Kickstarter and Patreon. Writing is, uh, Patreon's for writing, too. I it's tried, not, and it didn't work out for me that well. You still have, I still need to find... Uh, I tried, and it didn't work out for me well, either, and I'm not a writer. Um, it's just, it depends on the person. You have to get out there, um, you have to, uh... Basically, you have to make a name for yourself, which is difficult. You have to keep at it. Um, you have to be full of positivity. You have to be frequent. Um, a schedule especially helps because if you're like reliably frequent, like say um, people can keep track of when you're supposed to be posting and you keep up to it, um, that is also a good way to gather more attention. Um, Advertising is especially the best way for attention, like, you know, buying advertising banners or whatever on websites, um, because it it lets people be aware that you exist. <laughs> um, uh, being on multiple platforms especially helps, but it is very difficult to keep up by yourself. Um, if you can get help somehow <laughs> for others to help you with doing cl uh, cross platforms that that especially um, is going to make a difference but most of the time people don't have that help and they have to do it themselves and the people who do that themselves I am beyond amazed because I can't do it I scramble I do not have time um, I take too much time in my artwork as it is um, I'm not one of the fastest hands in the industry, which also makes things discouraging for me because people tend to prefer stuff that's done amazingly and whipped out within a day. Um, I've seen enough commissioners even that have questioned a very well-known artists um, within about 15 minutes being like, where's my piece that I commissioned you when they asked for something extremely elaborate? Um, because honestly, a lot of people who do commission are uh, other creators often uh, aren't creators themselves, so they don't have a grasp on how things are done or how much effort is actually put into it. A lot of people also assume that art in any form should also just be free. <laughs> because it's you not labor. You work for me for no money! Really yeah. They basically think that, you know, it's, it's effortless and um, that it's it's something to just be appreciated and not paid for, even though it is, it's not a necessity. It is a frivolity. <laughs> it is something you should pay for, and it is labor. A lot of effort and sweat and blood and 
creativity and thought and intelligence goes into making these pieces and um people often don't think about that uh i've i've even heard about a wedding photographer that did all these amazing shots i've seen some crazy shit that wedding photographers do just to get their shots it's insane and this guy did all these amazing shots and he was already expecting to get paid because he was hired um and at the end of the day um the bride and groom were like, yeah, we want these for free. All you did was just sit around and take shots, and I can do that with my cell phone. And so he walked out. He was like, no, I'm not giving this to you for free. If that's how you feel, then you can take more photos with your cell phone then. And I'm glad that he did that, because he shouldn't accept that kind of bullshit, and he shouldn't want to um, do business with that kind of mentality either. Um, whether or not they actually did turn around and plea <laughs> for his photos. Uh, boy, have um, I seen that mentality before. It's sometimes even in my own head. Yeah, it's it's very difficult to n turn down any kind of payments, even if it is um, from that kind of negativity, um, because you're still, you know, you're trying to make ends meet. Uh, but yeah, um, in the long run, it's better for you that way because your clientele will be people that actually respect you and expect to pay you and treat you like you're actually doing a job, which is exactly what it is. You're putting in labor, and you should be paid for that labor. Oh, th that brings up another thing that I read a long time ago. There was a blogger who wrote a book. I I, I just heard this out over on like a couple podcasts that said the same thing about you know, passion isn't labor, and passion isn't you know something you should be paid for. Passion is just something you should keep on the side, and you just should just go and get a job. My Mike Rowe, the guy from Dirty Job, says stuff like this. You shouldn't follow your passion. You should just get a job that we all need. You should go get a job as an electrician or stuff like that. And if you have a passion, you really shouldn't follow it. That's the thing, though, is that people don't realize that a lot of things are passions <laughs> that they don't expect. Some people actually do follow um, careers like electrician because they enjoy that kind of stuff. Same can be said about um, anyone working in a lot of the technology industries, um, celebrities, acting is a passion. But whose passion is to, like, be a guard? Do those actors get paid? Oh, yes, they do. They get paid a lot. Look at football. People often think that athleticism is a passion. It is a passion. Do they get paid for it? Hell yes, they do. <laughs> Whoops. To be if fair... If you do any yeah. kind of sport outside of like high school you're gonna get paid for to be it. fair some people just did it for the money that itself <laughs> exactly it's a very uh well but then again you know, there's, there's the whole um, argument that difficult maybe we to have too many football though. players in artists and we need more guys who don't have a passion in picking up garbage or you know sewer maintenance or stuff like that some people even have passions not, in that. Not a Often lot, I would they imagine. Just stick to being volunteers, though. Not a lot, I would imagine, and we a lot need of those stick jobs to definitely. Being volunteers to actually, yeah. Um, it's because most that have passions in that kind of work usually stick to being volunteers because they're they want to clean up to help, you know, society, the community, um, the wildlife. And when you do volunteer work, you're usually doing exactly that. A whole lot more than you are just picking up garbage <laughs> for other people at their house um, and stuff like that. Um, honestly, I'm shocked that there isn't more um, more people in the, in the waste industry careers than there are uh, because it does pay well. You're dealing with um, toxic substances. Um, you have to have a certificate for handling hazardous waste to be like a garbage man and stuff. And um, 
it pays well because you're you literally have risks they're basically paying you for health risks um and so it tends to pay a lot better than uh, a lot of jobs especially minimum wage and often enough you're dealing with a lot of <laughs> people what are you doing with shit so in my honest opinion i feel like doing garbage would probably be a lot nicer than working at mcdonald's or any other fast food place. Food industry jobs are oh, usually yeah, the worst. Oh, there's horror stories on that. Wage. Oh yeah, <laughs> I have plenty. More than that, I mean, I'm also talking about the um, food production industry, which is probably worse. Well, food production, as in you work on a farm or you're working in a factory making food. Um, I could tell you some horror stories, not not personal, but. Stuff I hear on the news, and <laughs> I'll save that for a different cast. There's definitely some some risks involved. Yes. Um, I I by that I also mean slaughterhouses. Those are usually more. Yeah. Those are usually kind of more obvious risks that people walk into. Those are often usually paid better than minimum wage as well. Not always. Some some don't pay very well, even though they should. Um, but. Yeah, I was more pertaining to minimum wage jobs. Um, food service jobs, in particular, um, are very, very soul crushing. <laughs> Retail is also very soul crushing, <laughs> but food service is worse <laughs> in many ways. Uh, if you're working a restaurant, it's not as bad. Um, though it can get also <laughs> nasty um but fast food or um i technically worked in a restaurant but i didn't because it was a fucking food court location in a mall and uh mall food court especially when it comes to f like food service jobs are destroying they will obliterate you they are the. Worst. I mean, I currently work like that right um, now. It's a food court like area, and where I'm a I'm a busser. It's a food court area, but it's not in a mall. It's just in a place downtown. It's just a whole bunch of restaurants that kind of look like a food court. But I'm just running around cleaning tables. It's not as bad as I would picture it. Not not as bad as a mall area. Well, <laughs> I'm sure that's way worse. I mean, you always yeah. said. If you're just cleaning tables, then you're probably not dealing with too much customer service, and customer service is where it's mostly just yeah I hear destroying. You. Oh god, the screaming um. children! Just thinking about it, I'm having <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> oh god, I hated working in the mall. Um, but yeah, they can get. They can get pretty soul crushing. Um, my past job that I worked a lot longer than the one in the mall, uh, that one literally drove oh me God. to suicide. <laughs> Should we be yeah. discussing this on um, podcast? <laughs> well, I'm still here, so. <laughs> um, it's caused me a lot of health problems because of what I did. But I already had plenty to begin with, so I don't really care. Um, but yeah, I I worked for um a certain uh market grocer, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I laugh because I worked for that grocer too. That's how we met. Yeah. Yep, that's where we met, and um, they didn't they didn't stock. The um, the like cleaning supplies. So um, and they they often had me cleaning the bathrooms a lot. The women's restrooms were disgusting. I don't know how someone managed to take a shit between stalls underneath the divider, <laughs> but they did. Oh, it was disgusting. But I had to clean up feces rather frequently with my bare hands. Paper towels and a spray bottle. So did I. In that specific market that will not be named, in case they come back to sue us. Don't One, say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Very. That's a 
that's very against code. Um, I tried bringing it up with the health department. They didn't really, they just agreed with the manager. The manager was saying that like, you know, he doesn't have time for that. That's what he has us for. Even though I remember in the orientation that I wasn't supposed to be one of the ones to do that, whether or not I had the proper cleaning equipment, which was apparently on me to have, even though like they didn't have it stocked. Um, but yeah, it, it, I remember specifically at orientation, them saying that that was the manager's job. Whenever it was handling any kind of bodily fluid or excrement, it was supposed to be handled by the manager because it could contain blood, or something else, and you could get something very bad, and the company could be sued. I went to Union about it. They did nothing as well. Their Union apparently used to be good from people I've heard that have worked there for 30 years or whatever and retired. That but was 30 years anymore. ago, so... Pretty sure they're paid off. <laughs> yeah. Um, and... Uh, they did that with Vomit, too. Um... One time someone threw up in the bathroom. And, oh, I had to clean up uh, vomit so many times in my, my the current job I have. <laughs> and one of the employees threw up in the employee bathroom and they were made to clean it up. But that makes sense because it was their own bodily fluids anyway. So I don't care about a manager cleaning that up. Um, but everything else, it was supposed to be on them. And they never did it. And they said it was our job. But another thing is... If it was our job to be cleaning hazardous waste, one, we wouldn't be a fucking clerk or whatever the hell they're, they're going to call us. We would be janitors. We would be some kind of clerk, cleaning service title. We would have certi uh, certification for it, for handling hazardous waste, because that's exactly what it is. And we would be paid a whole lot more than minimum wage. So what they're doing is not. Like I don't even think they had a janitor other than the guy who used the um like little um like vehicle they use for scrubbing the floors. They had janitors. I, didn't see any. I, I hated the janitors. They had them during um, hours that the store was not open. We were open twenty four hours. Um. They had them when people were oh, not no, there. No, 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 no. I'm no thinking of the other safe way. Sorry. Oh, damn it! Yeah. We'll cut that out. Um, but yeah, they... <laughs> Fine. They, they came, uh, between, um, service hours and cleaned. I've seen the janitors before when I came in early and I was watching them leave. I fucking hate the janitors. Because they took supplies they weren't supposed to be using and used them, destroyed them by leaving them in places they weren't supposed to be left, and kept everything so disorganized that it just was disgusting. And it made everything more problematic than it already was cleaning anything up in that fucking store. Uh, I, I hated those janitors. They were probably, honestly, <laughs> like green card wanting janitors that weren't actually paid correct wages because they seemed like they weren't actually trained in their jobs. Um, and uh, knowing that corporation, they probably were just so they could get the cheapest um, cost out of it. For the record, you are touching into another uh, hot topic issue right now. Let's be clear with the... Never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll skip over it. Never mind. Yeah. I... I have nothing against those kind of people trying to just make a living, but... Um, <laughs> they... They should be paid. They should work and be paid the same way we are. 
there shouldn't be people working for under minimum wage for any any reason. Um, they should be following the laws just like everyone else, um, because it just it it helps corporations like that take advantage yeah, uh, of stuff like that, and also yeah, follow those laws. laws before they get taken away. <laughs> and it it makes them even more money hungry and disgusting than they already are um and i don't like that Who does? and it just it shouldn't it shouldn't be encouraged in any way whatsoever you know who also does that youtube in a different mm. sense but in still pretty sleazy way so let's get into that before we end off the mm. whole youtube with their algorithms and trying to i think they're trying to weasel my personal belief is they're trying to weasel some money off of lower content creators hello uh i don't know um some in some ways what they're doing makes sense like um some things are out of their control like the advertisers um that's out of their control because the advertisers choose how they want to be advertised. I hear that that that's not but, entirely true because you know, where else are the advertisers going to go? TV people, something that only old people watch. YouTube dominates the web market. Uh, not so always. That's the best place to you know advertise. Where else are they going to go? Yeah. Any motion? Um. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the advertisers aren't necessarily, you know, catered towards the elderly or whatever. Um, I've seen some crazy fucking ads. A lot of the ones that I usually see are, like, mobile app-based, but they're not always. Um, then again, some of those companies are, like, too big to fail, enough, so advertisers at that are, point, they don't even need to advertise. Yeah. They just advertise for the sake of advertising. Yeah. Yeah. And advertisers are also uh, the way the algorithms built that they tend to advertise things that are more likely to get your attention. So um, what I see is going to be different from other people. But the algorithm that they have going on, um, I told yeah, you about yeah, it you before, me, yeah. that, that video that um, uh -huh. Matt Pat did on uh -huh. Game Theorists called the... Logan uh, Loophole. What was it? Yeah. The Logan Paul Loop? The Logan Loophole. Um, he mentions a lot of the algorithms they have for how videos get attention and whatnot, and a lot of it has to do with... Um, reputable sources outside of YouTube mentioning them and because of that and how how much a lot of reputable sources are about focusing on the negativity of YouTube it's not a good idea to have the algorithm set that way because it ends up basically just advertising to the rest of the internet that YouTube is a place full of people like Logan Paul who do all this fucked up shit. Um, and it garners a lot of negative attention, and like he mentions in the video, the way that advertisers are, when they see something negative connected to that website, they're going to pull everything from that site, not just from that particular person, they're going to pull it from the entire site. Yeah. Because the entire yeah. site is responsible for that one <laughs> person. One bad up, yeah. Because that's how it's seen by anyone else, because anyone else who's not, you know, uh, I guess internet savvy isn't going to understand that that this is a place full of free individuals that will do what they want regardless of regulations. Um so they look at it as not oh look at this piece of shit who's done this fucked up thing on this platform they will see oh look at what YouTube has on their website. And so it's YouTube that gets that attention and not Logan Paul. And so YouTube looks bad 
<laughs> and not just him. One bad apple spoils the bunch. And so advertisers don't. Yeah, basically. This is why we can't have nice things. One person ruins it for everyone else. And advertisers know that, so they immediately pull everything because they don't want to be associated with that. Because it's bad for advertisement. Even though, honestly, like, um, like what's been seen before, like, say, with GTA, for instance, uh, Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> the video game, uh, bad publicity can be just as good. It's still publicity. <laughs> It can be just as good as positive. As long publicity. as it gets people in the views. Um, it gets enough attention to get their foot in the door. And it's all people can think about at a certain point because negativity spreads like wildfire. It Positivity really does. spreads like a weaker and wildfire. <laughs> I, I'm not the best analogy guy. And it's just as horrible. A <laughs> it's just as horrible as a wildfire, to be honest. <laughs> but, yeah, um, people tend to focus on the negativity a lot. It's just how we're wired, and um, back in the day, um, it's how we survived, and it makes sense. It doesn't make as much sense anymore because we don't have all the need for survival anymore, um, but it's still a part of our being and our instincts. So um, we are a lot more affected by negativity than positivity, sadly. Um, I feel like we're getting more affected by positivity than we used to be, though, so that's great. Um, so I'm hoping this kind of shit can get nipped in the butt soon, because I am sick of it. Uh, but it's there's just, another thing about this. Uh, did you see the recent, like this this month, that they did the YouTube algorithm thing? This month, you mean the Logan Loop? Or else. are you talking about something else? I read somewhere that they were it, uh, they're either planning or they already did this. Something about you can't monetize your videos at all if you are both. Don't have enough hours on your video. Not no. no what I want to try to say. Well, for one, you need to have at least a thousand subscribers in order to monetize anything. Huh. I guess. I don't know. Um, in some ways, that makes sense because it's kind of like you have to be like a legit creator and prove that you're, you know, you're here for a while instead of just like. Okay, I got what I needed. Now I'm gonna bounce. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I I believe, yeah, that you can, because there's a bunch of people who just upload like music videos or just you know the music with the text uh, for the YouTube video itself. Yeah, those guys don't have those, yeah. and they won't get monetized for it anymore. But then, who gets the money? YouTube, YouTube themselves. Yeah, well, YouTube was originally supposed to be a dating service <laughs> which probably would have earned them a lot more money since it was probably going to be a subscription thing but they wanted to do like a video based dating service thing and it just it i don't remember how i watched a thing on how youtube came to be um and it just it it turned into a place for cat videos instead, and just videos in general, and they were doing real good for themselves, even though the videos were free and everything, and I think after a while they started doing ads and stuff, and you know, there's revenue, and that's how they made their way, and then they made it so, like, you know, videos that people upload, you know, they could get paid for, um, Pitching in and getting revenue by putting their stuff on there um, and but getting these attention. these days, I think, for due to the YouTube. algorithm, they're trying to box not just certain YouTube YouTubers or Let's Players or whatnot, just trying to box out certain videos that... Nah, what am I trying to say? It's just that they just try to... With the algorithm, they just try to demonetize a lot of videos or something to make extra money because, after all, the ad still plays. So, unless YouTube gets their money... The advertiser gets free advertising. So someone's making money off of this, and it's not the YouTuber. 
Yeah, that happens. But honestly, that's where it started. It, it, it started in a place where they were making money off of ad revenue and no one else was. And people were still posting videos. It was just a place to post videos for fun. Um, and then it became more of a thing where you could get paid to do that. And that was really cool. Um, people aren't always going to get paid for um, their videos. Like people often didn't opt for monetization uh, when they posted videos anyway. So YouTube was just getting the money instead. Um, I don't exactly have a problem with YouTube getting money. I do. They've... <laughs> I don't. Um, they need a way to sustain the site. And also, um, it's, it's a business now. The moment that they started doing it where basically they were making employees by having people post videos and getting paid by, uh, for it, um, they became a business. It was supposed to be a business, a different kind of business, originally anyway. They've never been... Charitable. Um, yeah. Um, they've never been more or less than what they've, you know, intended to be. For the most part um and so i don't have anything against them the only thing i do have against them is how stupid their algorithms are um how stupid they are in general and also how non-existent their support network is If you try to contact them about any problems with the site, they basically do nothing. And um, they have people paid for looking at flagged videos and whatnot. Um, they're paid way less than they should be, for one. They're also expected to do stuff that shouldn't be expected for that kind of job. Oh, well, I'm not going to get into that, though. Uh, my friend almost took a job <laughs> with them. Um, but, uh, yeah, even so, a lot of stuff is getting through, and they're doing nothing about it even when they're contacted about it. Like, that happened with Logan Paul, for instance, with the, the suicide forest and that uh, finding that, like, dude who committed suicide yeah, or whatever yeah. in the video. Um, I haven't personally Neither seen have the I. video. I don't want to. It's been since taken down. I could probably find it elsewhere say. on the internet if I tried, but I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to kind of condone that kind of fucked up shit. Um, he followed up with even more messed up videos, like pretending to die in front of his fans with his blood splattered across a window and shit. That that's really nice to do to your fans. Cool. I still thought it was cool funny, job, buddy. Um, I I thought it was like huh? kind of funny. Fucked up, but funny. The fact that he did it in front of actual adoring fans and it was unbeknownst to them. I don't, I don't like that like either. <laughs> he said nothing about it either. Um, as far as I know, he didn't apologize either. Aside from that like kind of weird fake apology video he did later way later, which was also apologizing about the suicide forest shit. He did a bunch of messed up stuff like that, because he knew it was getting him attention. And the numbers don't lie either. He is getting more attention because of it. <coughs> but, uh... YouTube finally posted a thing saying something about it way later, and, um was basically like, yeah, it was messed up, and yeah, we're sorry our algorithms basically helped this guy get attention, but we handled it accordingly, and it shouldn't happen again, blah blah blah. But they didn't handle it accordingly. He took it down himself. Because he got too much I was about to say, yeah, accordingly my ass. Yeah. They didn't do shit. He took it down himself. That's peer pressure doing the job, not them. Yeah, that's exactly what I don't like about YouTube, is that um, they don't We have to handle well. that. It's not professional whatsoever. Um, they don't do anything. 
when people are in an uproar about anything and they don't tell anyone what's going on. And that's, especially for as big as this website has gotten, it's not okay. They have a lot of responsibility on their hands and they're not handling it. Facebook does the same, and that's why I can't stand that Among place. Among other reasons. There's plenty of people who have their fucking shit stolen on Facebook all the time, and they do nothing about it, which legally isn't okay. So I just, I... YouTube could be a wonderful place. Uh, but they need to get their uh, shit together. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> wonderful place. Just like Patreon. They're just, they could be a wonderful place. It used to be. But they need <laughs> to get their shit together. Because everything's falling apart because they don't know what they're doing. Well, who does? Us? <laughs> Story of my life. No one knows what they're fucking doing and it's causing That's problems. The, the TM. End. TM. <laughs> Trademark. Trademark of my life. Uh, well, that's pretty much yeah, we're I at the end of our hour, so we better think... wrap up. Yeah. So, uh, that's the, that'll be the podcast for uh, this session. Uh, you can follow me at uh, the Saber85, T-H-E, uh, capital T, H-E, capital S, A-V-I-O-R, 85, on Twitter. If you want to send me anything or whatnot, uh, Amber, your Twitter. Uh, you can follow my Twitter at uh, Panic Panel, P, uh, capital P, A double N E C, capital P, A double N E L. Um, I also have a Twitch. It's not all that. <laughs> I have a Twitch, but I mean he's <laughs> active because I'm streaming every day, but. <laughs> But uh, no one ever comes. Only a couple people come. I only have a couple, a handful. Ah, of... shush. Advertise it anyway if you're active. Anywhere else you want um, to plug? I, I have a DeviantArt um, at Sayoko. Um, at least I'm pretty sure it's still Sayoko. I haven't looked at it in a while. Whoops. Um, yes, it is. Um, capital S E I O K O U. Um, I also have a fur affinity, though I'm not really active on there, um, either. Um, I'm trying to get all my art stuff back together. Kind of been sticking to sketchbooks and doodles recently. Um, but I should be frequent on there again soon. Um, same with my Twitter. Um. Well, that does it for the podcast for January 22. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you again next time. Yep. Talk to y'all later.